Welcome. Welcome to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Ulrika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach and a galactic astrologer. This video is a galactic astrology reading of the Aries new moon solar eclipse at 19 degrees, 24 minutes on April 8th, 2024. Welcome. What I do in these videos, I put an outer layer of fixed stars, celestial bodies, and galactic points to the traditional Western tropical astrology wheel. And that is to help us start to tap into something greater than what we think we are. And that is our multidimensional self. Galactic astrology is a practice of looking into uh, our soul's journey, but also our uh, association and uh, cosmic heritage, our galactic heritage, which can be seen through a galactic astrology chart. And this video of the solar eclipse uh, is including three energetic themes that I've pulled out from the solar eclipse chart. And also uh, at the end, I provide you with some questions to integrate this solar eclipse energy some more should you want to kind of work with that energy um, and, and extend it into your own life. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link in the description below. This solar eclipse is a powerful one. Uh, Chiron has met up with the sun and the moon to the degree. So it's a triple conjunction that is in Aries at 19 degrees, a very potent point in our astrology uh, zodiac wheel. Conjunct the triple conjunction is the fixed star Tau Ceti in the Cetus constellation. And I will talk more about Tau Ceti as we go through the three energetic themes for this solar eclipse. The ruler of this solar eclipse is Mars at 13 degrees of Pisces, conjunct Saturn, and also conjunct the Archenar fixed star in the Eridanus constellation. This solar eclipse is talking about that now is the time to step into our true self. And there may be a little surprise moment here because who we thought we were, we may not be. And this highlight of Chiron at the solar eclipse is really the driver for this unearthing of our true self. And the moment we realize that we are so much more than what we think we were, there is a, an emptiness. So what do we do with that emptiness? Like, who am I now? And, and what do I fill this emptiness with? What can I discover about myself? And that is exactly what Chiron is here to highlight. Because Chiron is the archetypal energy of something we may have not seen, something we haven't wanted to see, or something we have been hurt by in the past or past lives, and we turn that into potential. What is it in that golden nugget that Chiron is bringing in here at the solar eclipse that is part of your new direction? At the solar eclipse, we are finding the missing parts of ourselves, the parts of ourselves that we may have not connected with yet, the bigger parts of ourselves that at this solar eclipse, we are cleaning house, we are making way, we are making space for the new. And we are also in the process of discovering what is going to fill that emptiness that we have cleared out. It might also be that we have to go against the grain because once we realize who we truly are, there's no going back. And the realization of who we truly are may not be who we were told that we are. So the going against the grain here is a strong energy within this solar eclipse, because the key question here is what works for me? What is it that makes me unique? 
at the solar eclipse, we are getting into our own life because now is the time to be part of your own life. It's not the time anymore to live in the fringes of your life. No, this solar eclipse is asking us all to get into the center of our life and be part of it. This solar eclipse is going to highlight something that we are now connecting with after having realized that, ah, there is a bigger me that I have the opportunity to connect with. Our multidimensional self is vast. And uh, this solar eclipse is one to uh, shake us up in that sense, but also to release parts of ourselves that no longer serves us and invite new parts that we have, haven't connected with yet. So part of this solar eclipse process is to focus on the self in Aries. And we are invited to include more of self-compassion, self-forgiveness, self-empowerment uh, as part of this process of releasing the old and inviting the new. How to embody in a unique way who we truly are. So uh, this is a very transformational time. Chiron is here in the mix for a reason. And as we go through the three themes, I'll walk you through what I see as far as walking through that process in the eclipse uh, portal that we currently are in. So before we go into looking at the solar eclipse chart, I'd like to share what the three energetic themes are. The first theme is the key to the missing parts of self. And here we're going to talk about the fixed star uh, Tau Ceti and also Eris. The second theme is transmuting dark to light. And here we're going to talk about uh, Eridanus and the fixed star Archanar, but also the dwarf planet Orcus. The third theme is perseverance is mastery. And here we're going to talk about Pegasus and the fixed star uh, sheet and also Venus and Lilith's interaction with the supergalactic center, along with Neptune's key role here in this solar eclipse. Are you curious about your own galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There is a link in the description below. Let's take a look at the solar eclipse chart next. So here we have the Aries new moon solar eclipse chart. And as you can see, everything is squeezed into a couple of houses here. And I've highlighted the solar eclipse, the sun and the moon conjunction uh, in red here. And also this solar eclipse includes Chiron conjunct exactly at 19 degrees, 24 minutes. Chiron has been in this position, around this position for a while, conjunct the Cetus constellation and the fixed star Tau Ceti at 18 degrees of Aries for a while. And the sun and the moon has caught up with Chiron, uh, building this powerful triple conjunction at this time. The ruler of this solar eclipse is Mars at 13 degrees of Pisces, conjunct Saturn at 14 degrees of Pisces, and that duo is conjunct the Eridanus constellation and the fixed star Archanar at 15 degrees of Pisces. And there are two things that I want to highlight here just before we go into the first theme, and that is the square that the solar eclipse is making to the Lyra Ring Nebula M57 at 20 degrees of Capricorn. And we've been talking about the Ring Nebula uh, in the Lyra constellation for quite some videos, but in for simplicity, it, it symbolizes, is associated with energy around human galactic heritage. Uh, and the square here is just highlighting for us that this focus on releasing and getting into contact with our galactic heritage uh, is a, really a growth opportunity for us. 
the ruler of the solar eclipse, Mars, is opposite the dwarf planet Orcus. And we're going to talk more about Orcus in the second theme uh, coming up. But this is an important opposition that I want to highlight as well. We talked about uh, the Cetus constellation and the fixed star Tau Ceti in the lunar eclipse video uh, recently, but I, I think it's worth mentioning this again because of the prominence of Tau Ceti here being conjunct, the triple conjunction of the sun, moon, Chiron here at the solar eclipse. Tau Ceti is associated with energy of diplomacy, diligence, support, and it really symbolizes the empowered um, practice that we can have uh, by going within to discover who we truly are. And you, you can see here the, the powerful uh, female here in her most empowered state is when she's going within in stillness. And Tau Ceti uh, is here to help us guide this discovery now because Chiron conjunct Tau Ceti means that there is more to discover and maybe even there is a wisdom that we can learn from the wounds that we are carrying. So allow yourself to uh, go within this solar eclipse. It's a, a journey of self-discovery that we're on. So uh, Tau Ceti is a powerful uh, energy to connect with at this time. So I wanted to also show you the fixed star Archanar, and you may recognize this from the lunar eclipse video. Venus was conjunct Eridanus constellation and the fixed star Archanar at the time. Now it's Mars's turn to be conjunct. And if you recall, the Eridanus constellation and the fixed star Archanar in particular is associated with spiritual expansion, that free spirited uh, energy of exploration and expansion of spirituality. So Mars's conjunction here with Saturn conjunct Eridanus Archanar is really that go button, that call to action, because uh, it's time to step into our spiritual selves and, and create a relationship with our spiritual self. And we're going to talk more about that in the theme two coming up. This solar eclipse can be seen as a doorway to significant life changes. And it's calling us into a new beginning uh, with opportunities to start anew and refresh our uh, environment and the reality that we relate to. With Chiron so prominent at this solar eclipse, it's going to be a clearing out of something that we have been working on for a while because we want to see the potential of this now. We want to turn it into the opportunity that we either can teach others or the lesson we learned for ourselves so that we can approach and have a new perspective, approach something from a different perspective. And many of us who have Chiron in Aries are really feeling this solar eclipse extra because also, Tau Ceti is here to do uh, this work with us in a diplomatic way, in a supportive way, in a diligent way. And uh, here we are at the solar eclipse uh, portal to realize that we are alive. And we are invited to be fully present in our lives and be part of it for real. So here we have the first theme that I call the key to the missing parts of self. And here I've highlighted the solar eclipse in blue here, the triple conjunction on opposite sides of the solar eclipse. We find Mercury conjunct Aries at 24 degrees of Aries. And on the other side of the solar eclipse is the North Node conjunct Andromeda constellation and the fixed star Alperats. 
So whatever comes out of this solar eclipse energy for you is likely going to include a, some sort of new revised, refreshed direction, and also the urge to share it with others unapologetically with Aries there and conjunct Mercury. Super powerful uh, placements here in Aries. And it's all about stepping into the center of our true self. If we start first with Mercury and Aries there at 24 degrees of Aries, opposite the Boots constellation and the fixed star Actress at 24 degrees of Libra. Actress is associated with energy around emotional healing mastery, but also from a more intuitive perspective, often mixed in with science. So this infusion directly into Mercury here conjunct Eris is speaking to us that we are the rebel in terms of communicating uh, what works for us and how we are healing our emotional wounds at this time. This is a powerful T-square through the squares that this opposition is making to Canis uh, Minor uh, constellation, a uh, fixed star, Procyon at 26 degrees of Cancer. This is also a star that we have been talking about in the past, but it's associated with new spiritual technology, new invention, education around how we can uh, merge science with spirituality and what technology is coming out of that, that we may not be able to uh, fathom at this time. But this T-square, as uh, I interpret it, is a growth opportunity to really bring in the rebel moment here to the true self is a unique energy. Aries is here to really help us with Mercury to allow ourselves, first of all, from the inside, since Mercury is in uh, retrograde here, it's this conversation on the inside about what it, what works for you, as opposed to following a, uh, a system or a template or uh, an expectation that comes from the outside. This T-square is suggesting to us to tap into higher consciousness. It basically can be downloads coming in and allowing us to explore new ways of communicating with ourselves. We're also invited at this time to stand up for our truth and stop fooling ourselves. It's time to step into that center circle of our own self and stand up for who we truly are. So all the unique ideas that, that you may have shut down within yourself in the past, now it's time to bring them out and start talking about them. First with yourself, because this is, might be what the conversation is for now. Uh, grow this inner conversation. We're invited here at this solar eclipse to really go within and, and witness that inner conversation shifting. So you may recognize the second part of this theme, which is a lasting grand cross between the North Node at 15 degrees of Aries, conjunct the Andromeda Alparats at 14 degrees of Aries, opposite the South Node. But the squares that uh, are happening here, maintaining this grand cross, the squares to Lyra Vega at 15 degrees of Capricorn, and also the squares to uh, Sirius A at 14 degrees of Cancer. Now, this is the karma clearing that we are feeling around this eclipse portal. This is uh, associated with human galactic heritage. Both Sirius and Lyra, many of us have soul history associated with these fixed stars and constellations. So the karma clearing that is, this grand cross is firing up <laughs> is real. And I just wanted to highlight that with Aries conjunct Mercury at this time, it is the extra spice that we receive here during the solar eclipse. I also want to highlight Mercury's 
touch points here to the eclipse degree of 19 of Aries, and that will happen on April 16th. And also Mercury will be touching down on 15 of Aries uh, at the very last day before Mercury goes direct on April 25th. So there will be a um, revisiting and uh, chances. So this is a, a month long energy. This karma release will be taking place uh, over at least a month. And as you make space for the new through this release, notice the downloads here that Mercury is uh, engaging with Procyon here and Actress in this T-square. Notice the downloads during this time as well. The North Node's conjunction to Andromeda Altbrats at 14 degrees of Aries is associated with the desire to uh, break free from limitations, the boxes that we're putting ourselves in, in favor of enjoying life, being part of our life. So this is a, a long standing, a couple of weeks here, a grand cross that is helping us with that emotional healing, that karma release, that focus on our direction forward that we're invited to do. So I wanted to highlight Eris here as an archetypal energy that is so key at this solar eclipse. Uh, Eris, the rebel, the uh, feminine uh, energy that goes beyond what is the norm. Her uh, egg-shaped orbit here is just uh, one way she is describing herself as out of the norm and very unique. Her powerful um, way of breaking the limits, being out there beyond uh, Neptune as a trans-Neptunian object as part of the Kuiper Belt even further out than what we can imagine. So Eris is uh, bringing in that uh, desire to be unique, to be um, ourselves. So I just wanted to uh, show you here how out there <laughs> she is and her influence on this solar eclipse is prominent. Here we have the second theme that I've called transmuting shadow to light. And this theme is focused on the ruler of the solar eclipse, which is Mars conjunct Saturn, uh, conjunct Eridanus constellation, and the fixed star Archonar at 15 degrees of Pisces. Now, I want to highlight this opposition that we see here to the dwarf planet Orcus. Orcus is associated with karmic consciousness. And this opposition is a call to action to allow that karmic consciousness and the awareness of the process of transmuting karma. This is a, a particular um, focus on our spiritual evolution, our spiritual uh, progress and invitation to expand because Archanar is that playful spirituality that is coming in that is very light so uh, mars and saturn are in the mix here to get this process going within ourselves saturn is here to take the lessons to to mark off the lessons that we have learned and but also to tap us on the shoulder in the event that we haven't really done the work so to say there is a powerful sextile to Jupiter, and as we know, there will be a very significant conjunction uh, later on in the month with Jupiter and Uranus at, uh, in, in Taurus here. This sextile is a preview of what's coming and what we're asked to embody. So likely it has to do with this uh, infusion of spiritual progress or spiritual uh, expansion because that sextile is something that's uh, coming in uh, and we're asked to be uh, comfortable with embodying it. We also have a powerful sextile to Cirrus at 17 degrees of Capricorn here. 
Ceres is that earth goddess. She is the fertility that brings abundance. So it's an invitation for us to uh, allow this spiritual infusion and expansion uh, coupled with the karmic process, the karmic consciousness coming into our uh, sphere here to help us release and process karma that needs to be released at this time, but doing so from a abundant standpoint, an embodied standpoint, an expansive way. Um, so these two sextiles are really, really powerful to stabilize uh, the infusion that comes in through Archanar here, but also in opposition to Orcus. And as you probably already have figured out, this is another kite. I love finding the kites in the, the chart. So here we have another one. And this is highlighting Orcus as being the dwarf planet that brings in the uh, awareness around the karmic consciousness, the karmic process, and how we can work with our uh, release of karma in a very empowered way. And doing so from an abundant standpoint and an expansive standpoint, bringing in new ideas, bringing in our multidimensional self in the mix when we are transmuting and healing emotional wounds or past life wounds. I want to highlight Orcus, and Orcus is a dwarf planet that was discovered in 2004. Uh, this image here of the orbit as opposed to the sun and the Pluto uh, and also the other uh, dwarf planet, Ixion, all of these three, Pluto, Orcus, and Ixion, are really brothers, <laughs> according to Alan Clay's uh, beautiful description in his new book, N uh, New Stars for a New Era, where I also, um, you can see a channeled image from that book, uh, highlighting the uh, archetypal energy of Orcus. Orcus brings in the awareness of the karma process, but also the consciousness that comes with that awareness. And karma uh, transmutation has a lot to do with working with our shadow and transmuting it with integrity and what this ultimately means is that we have to face our fears, but we can do so in a abundant way, in an expansive way. Orcus is not afraid of dealing with the issue because Orcus is inviting us to take the lessons and take the experience around our uh, transmutation of our shadows into light as a lesson and learn from it and for the purposes of uh, growth. So we are really invited here to utilize this influx of expansive spiritual uh, evolutionary uh, energy through Eridanus Archanar, uh, th uh, facilitated by Saturn and Mars here at the solar eclipse, and ground it in our Jupiter and uh, Uranus uh, invention here. <laughs> I call it innovative type of energy. And also with the Earth through Ceres in, uh, that can really bring in the abundance within here at this time. Lastly, here we have the third theme that I called perseverance is mastery. This theme is focused on Venus and Neptune's uh, galactic interactions. And if we start with Venus at four degrees of Aries, she is in opposition now to supergalactic center at two degrees of Libra. And I pulled in the true Lilith, actually, also, who, which is conjunct the supergalactic center, because the Venus-Lilith opposition here and the infusion of magnitude of universal wisdom from the supergalactic center, one of our biggest drivers, black holes of uh, the universe as we know it, is, this is a powerful axis 
Neptune is making its final degrees here of the zodiac wheel, last degrees of Pisces, now being at 28 degrees, 11 minutes of Pisces. Neptune is conjunct Pegasus constellation in the fixed star sheet. This is a uh, powerful, powerful conjunction. Pegasus sheet is associated with uh, hope, freedom, um, allowing us to feel hope when there is no hope left. It's bringing in a resilient energy, but also ability to integrate polarities. So Neptune's guidance here is key. And Neptune is making a number of powerful aspects over time here that has been in place for a while. And it this we're talking about the long game here, the perseverance that we're invited to walk the talk with. And if we look at first the sextile between Neptune and Pluto, Pluto now at one degree of Aquarius, conjunct Aquila Altair at one degree of Aquarius. Aquila Altair is associated with energy around that toggle we can do between our ego and our spiritual self. Aquila Altair is uh, inviting us to expand our relationship with our spiritual self. So Pluto is really here uh, to help us also with this conjunction to expand our relationship with our spiritual self. And Neptune is really helping us here to guide that process long term. Neptune is making a powerful trine to Canis Minor Procyon at 26 degree of Cancer. This is the new technology that we are bringing in from a spiritual perspective at this time. And Neptune is overseeing that, that connection with Procyon we've talked about many times. And it's this merge between science and, and uh, spirituality and how we are coming to terms with that within ourselves. Now at this solar eclipse, it's highlighted through that trine again with, with um, Neptune. Neptune is also making a square to Orion constellation and the fixed star Beto Juice at 29 degrees of Gemini. The square to Orion Beto Juice is about integrating that polarity that we are seeing uh, perhaps within ourselves, but also to our past, our karma, our soul's journey. Uh, which likely as a human being have included uh, polarity, experiences of the dark, the shadow, and the experience of the light as well through various incarnations on our path of our soul's journey. Now, this square is an invitation to grow. Squares I interpret as growth opportunities. And the signature of Orion Better Choose here is that uh, we allow the integration of polarity as part of this process. And all this is fueled by this Venus opposites supergalactic center axis at this time at the solar eclipse. Very powerful feminine energy, a universal wisdom coming into our solar system through uh, Venus opposition to supergalactic center and, and also highlighting Lilith's, true Lilith's position here also. This is um, very powerful uh, truth, sacred truth. And I also want to point out, I didn't put it in the chart here, but we still have that powerful air trine with Sedna conjunct Pleiades, Pluto conjunct Aquila Altair and supergalactic center at the very early degrees of the air signs there. That grand air trine is in the background, uh, very much uh, momentum and quickness uh, helping us to kind of process all of this. So so here we have Procyon and Betelgeuse, and I actually, we have Sirius here as well. You can uh, relate to where they are located on the sky map just quickly here. 
And here we have, lastly, the Pegasus constellation, and I've highlighted the fixed star sheet, which is associated with uh, hope hope when there's no hope left, but also very much associated with water intuition and relying on uh, the flow of water and going with the flow. So that's a big signature since Neptune is conjunct this fixed star at this solar eclipse to go with the flow and allowing the uh, eclipse season here to be a wave of water and uh, you following that instead of working against it. Pegasus is inviting us to uh, look higher and seek a higher perspective uh, allowing that hope to drive us, but also to trust our intuition and go with the flow to a greater extent. This opposition here of Neptune and Venus to supergalactic center is a very powerful axis that is keeping us going for the long haul. And the fixed star sheet is inviting us to stay with ourselves, to stay with what is our truth and what works for us. So there we go. There are the three energetic themes that I pulled out from this solar eclipse chart. The first theme, the key to the missing parts of self, facilitated by uh, Cetus constellation and the fixed star Tau Ceti, but also... Uh, very prominently, Eris's conjunction with Mercury at this time, allowing us to really have that inner conversation about our truth and how we can step into our authenticity and true self uh, first within ourselves, having that conversation in a powerful way. The second theme is transmute shadow to light. And here we had that focus on Orcus, which is symbolizing the karmic consciousness and the process uh, that we can transmute and release karma, working with our shadows and not being afraid of it, but actually see it as a opportunity for growth and doing so in a supported, expansive way. The third theme was Perseverance is mastery. And yes, Venus opposition to supergalactic center at this solar eclipse is bringing in that deep soul healing of the feminine, but also Neptune's long-term guidance to be in it for the long haul. This is a longer process with a lot of background, uh, grand air trine, and a lot of aspects that Neptune is actively maintaining for us so that we can go through this process, this portal of healing, uh, especially this solar eclipse, is a, a true invitation to step into our lives, to feel that we are alive, to be engaged and present in uh, our current life here. That is uh, a big, big invitation, uh, this solar eclipse for everyone. So I have a couple of questions. Should you want to work with this solar eclipse energy and integrate it into your life some more? The first question is, what do you need to feel alive? And that is a question to go within with, to really examine what is it that makes me feel like I am alive and inspired. Uh, this is something that is going to be asked of us all to find out and integrate ev eventually. But this uh, season very much is a go within season. And this question about what is it that uh, makes me feel alive and present in my life is an invitation at this time. And also, how do you listen to yourself? Because part of uh, the invitation of the solar eclipse and the eclipse season in general here is to allow ourselves to listen to our inner conversation. And it may be things that we have not shared or with others before, because that Aries influence at the solar eclipse is going to bring out a conversation that may 
feel a little out there. <laughs> and if we start having that conversation with ourselves first, then we may be able to uh, expand and share with others in the next step. The second question is, what is that one thing that you have delayed that you know you need to face? Maybe part of your shadow, but how can you approach it now in a more empowered way? Look at it from a 360 view instead of maybe from the way you always have looked at this issue or this thing that you need to address and approach. How can you surrender to a empowered approach to go about it instead of using your will or pushing through? Now is the time to address that thing that you have delayed for so long. The third question is, how can you go deeper with the trust you have for your intuition, your gut feeling about things? The solar eclipse is an invitation to expand our ability to trust ourselves. And that comes from within. That comes with softening our inner world so that we can listen to the truth that comes through us. How can you be in this process of listening to yourself for the long haul? Not just once in a while, but actually include it in your daily practice. Because here at the solar eclipse and the eclipse season in general, it's going to unearth emotions, perhaps linked back to our soul's journey. And we may not always know where those emotions or feelings are coming from. How can you persevere and tease out the experiences of lessons that you've had and turn it into wisdom and bring it with you into the next expanded direction next. So there we go. This was the galactic astrology reading for the Aries new moon solar eclipse. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. I welcome you back. Thank you for being here and uh, listening to New Light Living Podcast. I'm Arika Sullivan. I'm an intuitive spiritual life coach. Are you curious about your galactic alignments? Download my galactic alignments reference guide. There's a link in the below description box. I also have an Eclipse Portal special uh, guided meditation where you get to meet your galactic soul family. So take a look at that. I have a link for that below in the description box as well. It's time to expand our perspective into a multidimensional view and also connecting with soul family uh, in physical form, but also in non-physical form. So this is the time to go beyond what is the norm, what is uh, the usual, because this eclipse season is one of self-discovery, but also of self-forgiveness, self-compassion, and self-acceptance. So I invite you to... Uh, Stay here, subscribe, like, and share if you enjoyed this video, and I will be back soon with another one. Take care. Bye-bye.